Good morning and welcome to worship this Sunday morning, this Easter 7, the day in which we remember Jesus' ascension into heaven. Good morning, Heather. Good morning, Bishop Matt. It's great to be with you this morning. And you. Hear these words from John chapter 17. This is eternal life that we may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Open our lips, O Lord. And we shall declare your praise. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Christ is risen, alleluia. He is risen indeed, alleluia. Would you join me as together we say the song of the church. We praise, praise you, O God. God. We, we acclaim you as the Lord. Lord. All, All creation worships you. you the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, the cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all praise, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Lord Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When, when you, you took, took our flesh to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us now draw near to God with sincerity and confidence and bring before God those parts of our lives for which we need forgiveness and healing. Merciful God, our Mecca and our Judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Our reading today is from Acts chapter 1 verses 6 to 14. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? Jesus replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up 
and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. Questions. My youngest grandchildren are currently learning to talk. They're at that lovely stage of trying out sounds, occasionally making words, and discovering that some sounds have meaning. Mam, mam, da, da, do, do. Uh, that's Hel Eloise's dog, by the way. The next word that Mackay learned was no. Why is it that children learn no before yes? The next word that Irene learned was why. Children quickly learn to ask all sorts of questions. Why? Why not? Are we there yet? What's for tea? When such questions can be bothersome to the parent, trying one's patience, but they reveal an inquiring mind, a hungry tummy, and a short attention span. What about the questions we ask God? Why? Why not? How long? Who? When? I wonder if God gets impatient with our questions. Many questions were asked to or about Jesus. Who is this? By what authority? Why don't your disciples fast? Should we pay taxes? We don't know where you're going, so how do we know the way? Don't you care that we're perishing? But Jesus often answered their questions with a question of his own. Where did John get this authority from? God or somewhere else? David himself calls him Lord, so how can he be his son? Whose head is this and whose title? Who do you say that I am? Do you have so little faith? I wonder what questions the disciples may have asked during Jesus' time with them, after his resurrection and before his ascension. Why did you have to die? What will happen to us? How long will you be with us? What are we supposed to do now? I wonder how many of their questions Jesus answered or whether he simply reiterated his pre-resurrection teaching, referring them back to what he said earlier. The one question they are recorded as having asked during this period is, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? The disciples were asking the wrong question. Jesus was not about to boot out the Romans and install his followers in the government. His disciples were still missing the point after all Jesus has said and done. They were still mired in their Jewish religious and nationalistic constructs. They were looking for restoration. But that's not what all this is about. Jesus' kingdom is bigger than all their political, cultural, and religious expectations. God is doing a new thing, a re-creation. God would handle their relatively small concerns in his own way and in his own time. 
they need not worry about that. They now had bigger fish to fry. Meanwhile, Jesus had other things for them to do, things that concerned spreading the news of his kingdom, not just among their families and friends, but across the whole planet. And for that, they needed power beyond their own. Matthew records Jesus giving the disciples a command, which we call the Great Commission. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. Here is the mission statement of the church. We don't need to spend hours and days of blue sky thinking, writing up bullet points and creating a catchy phrase of our own. And Luke, in this passage from Acts, records Jesus' words. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses. Here is the power, the energy, the wisdom for the task set before the church, the company of Jesus' followers. We are promised the Holy Spirit of God, power from on high, God himself to live in us and be with us, to enable us to live and work for his praise and glory, as the old prayer puts it. So Jesus gives his disciple this great commission, promising that he will be with them by the Holy Spirit. Then he leaves his disciples in a most remarkable way. He is lifted up from their sight, taken up from them towards heaven. By going from them in this way, they couldn't later think that he had simply wandered off somewhere else to live out the rest of his now renewed life in obscurity. No, the miracle of the resurrection is followed by the miracle of the ascension, accompanied by angelic reassurance. What are you standing here for? Staring into space. Don't worry, he's not finished with the earth yet. Don't you have work to do? I'm sure the questions continued through the ensuing, ensuing days as the disciples talked and planned and argued and debated. What did Jesus say we had to do? Where are we supposed to go? What do we say? Will anyone listen? What will the Jews do to us? How will the Romans react? It was okay when we went out in pairs before but we still had Jesus to go back to when things got hard and we didn't understand or couldn't cast the demon out. But what now? Perhaps they had to come to terms with the fact that this great commission was outside their comfort zone, beyond their ability, certainly more than their courage could face. Without him, they could do nothing. Yet he had promised and the Spirit came as promised on that first Pentecost bringing boldness, fluency, demonstrations of power and transformation in their lives and in the lives of their hearers as they bore witness to their crucified, risen and ascended Lord. Today, we live between Jesus' first coming and his return, between the incarnation and the second coming that Jesus promised. And we have inherited both the task and the power that the disciples were given. Our concerns as Christians, our mission is to be his witnesses, telling the world about Jesus changing lives and transforming communities. And we can only do this effectively in and through the power that Jesus himself has given to us, the Holy Spirit.
like the first disciples, we find ourselves living in somewhat uncertain, changing and challenging times. The coronavirus has disrupted everything that made up the fibre of daily life. The economy, health and education systems, the freedom to travel, full shelves in the supermarket, ready availability of a haircut or a footy game, coffee with friends, a visit to family. We are longing for things to return to normal, to be restored to us, for old certainties to be re-established. To repeat something I said earlier, the disciples were looking for restoration, but that's not what all this is about. Jesus' kingdom is bigger than all their political, cultural, and religious expectations. God is doing a new thing, a recreation. Okay, so back to questions. What questions are arising in you, your church friends, your communities today, to be addressed to Jesus? Perhaps they and you are asking, where is God in all this? What are you doing, Lord? Where are you at work? When can we get back into our church building? How do we go forward from here? Did God really say? What are we to do with all these questions, which often serve to undermine faith, demolish confidence, and destabilize action? How might we answer them like Jesus did? Jesus pointed beyond himself to the promises of God and his continuing mission in the world. My father is still working and I am also working. John 5, 17. He turned questions back on the questioners to give pause for deeper reflection. But who do you say that I am? Luke 9, 20. Jesus reframed people's concerns, giving them the greater context of the saving work of God, extended in love and grace to all people. Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind, so that God's works might be revealed in him. John 9, 3. Jesus redirected the people's attention from the cares of this world to the priceless treasures of our inheritance through faith. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Matthew 6, 19 to 21. I begged your disciples to cast it out, but they could not. Luke 9, 40. Jesus challenged the disciples' weakness and ineffectual actions with the offer of spiritual power through the Holy Spirit, dwelling with them and in them. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Acts 1, 8. You see, Jesus gave us a pattern for dealing with questions and uncertainty that we can learn from and apply to the ministry mission we are called to offer, to the congregations we worship with and to the communities we serve. We can turn questions like Jesus did to advantage, to strengthen faith, to build up confidence and mobilize for action when we depend on the presence and power of the Holy Spirit in the church and in the world. The disciples had to wait a few days to receive the Holy Spirit. We have him living in us from the moment we first believed So let's accept his presence and get on with the calling we all share to tell the world about the crucified Saviour who died and rose again 
ascended to heaven and one day will return. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. You servants of God, your master proclaim and publish abroad his wonderful name, the name all victorious of Jesus extol. His kingdom is glorious and rules over all. Our God rules on high, almighty to save, and still he is nigh, his presence we have. The great congregation his triumph shall sing, ascribing salvation to Jesus our King. Salvation to God who sits on the throne. Let all cry aloud and honor the Son. The praises of Jesus the angels proclaim. Fall down on their faces and worship the Lamb. Then let us adore and give him his right, all glory and power, all wisdom and might, all honor and blessing with angels above, and thanks never ceasing and infinite love. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us join together in the prayer which Jesus gave us. Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray the prayer for this day. O God, whose Son Jesus prayed for his disciples and sent them into the world to proclaim the coming of your kingdom, by your Holy Spirit hold the Church in unity and keep it faithful to your word, so that breaking bread together, we may be one with Christ in faith and love and service, now and forever. Amen. And as we come now to our prayers, I invite you to bring your prayers for the people who are on your hearts and minds before God. Let your requests be made known unto God. In, In everything, everything, give, give thanks. thanks. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Our prayers continue with a prayer for the Diocese of Bendigo. Generous God, we thank you for the Diocese of Bendigo, for the beautiful mountains, hills, plains and native forests that are our environment. Bless the cities, towns and rural areas the parishes and congregations in which we live and serve. Give us vision, energy and hope to be a missionary church. By the Spirit's gifts, equip us to live the gospel of Christ 
and make us eager to do your will that we may share the joys of the whole creation. We make our prayer through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Risen and ascended Lord, you rule the world with righteousness. Hear our prayer for your church and your world. Grant wisdom and integrity to all who govern, humility and wisdom to those who lead your church. Teach your people how to live in harmony. Grant acceptance to those who are unwanted or unloved. Care to the neglected and a voice to those who are never heard. Come among your people wherever they are this day. Fill us with your love that we may be witnesses in all the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our prayer. prayer. As a community, we have much to give thanks for. So let us have the litany of thanksgiving. Let us give thanks to God, saying, We thank you, Lord. For the beauty and wonder of creation, we, we thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. For all that is gracious in the lives of men and women, we, we thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. For daily food, for homes and families and friends, we, we thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. For minds to think, hearts to love, and imagination to wonder, we, we thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. For health, strength, and skill to work, and for leisure to rest and play, we, we thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. For patience in suffering, for courage and faithfulness in difficult times, we, we thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. For all who pursue justice and truth, we, we thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. And today, we give thanks especially for all those engaged in medical research, for their work, their participants, For all who work for peace and reconciliation in our world, and for those for whom you wish to give thanks this day. We thank you, Lord, for all the saints whose lives have reflected the light of Christ. We, we thank, thank you, Lord. Faithful God, you have promised to hear the prayers of all who ask in Jesus' name. In your mercy, accept our prayers. Give us what we have asked in faith, according to your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So friends, would you join me a moment in a moment as we conclude with the morning collect. Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed, Guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day in love to one another and to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Ken and Heather, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, who has redeemed us through the resurrection of Christ, who raised up to newness of life through the waters of baptism and has brought us out of slavery into everlasting freedom, give you joy and peace in faith and bring you to your eternal inheritance and the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be on you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.